Human immunodeficiency virus, or more commonly known as HIV, aggressively attacks a person's immune system, causing their body to fail in its ability to fight off disease. Eventually, HIV can turn into Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. When Tom Jocelyn and Mark Massey were both diagnosed with this unfortunate disease, they set out to document their experiences and shed a light into the realities of what it meant to fight this painful battle. And it was very shocking, to say the least. And it's always hovering in the back of your mind when you're looking for, you know, KS spots or lesions or some, some sign that the disease is finally really here. According to the World Health Organization, AIDS was declared an epidemic in the early 80s. After many years of uncertainty around the way that the disease spread and who it can affect, it would be revealed that the disease primarily affected homosexual men, avid drug users sharing needles, African Americans, and hemophiliacs. Eventually, the media would dub these communities that were suffering from HIV and AIDS as the 4-H Club, beginning the demonization of those who were greatly being affected in a disproportionate way. Eventually, the disease would sweep through countless communities as it remained ignored by government officials. That is until more notable celebrities like Rock Hudson and Freddie Mercury would both contract the virus and later pass away as a result. In an HIV and AIDS fact sheet published by the World Health Organization, it states that HIV continues to be a major global public health issue, having claimed about 33 million lives so far. Since research and treatment for HIV and AIDS have advanced leaps and bounds since 1981, when the disease first made headlines, there is no longer a death sentence attached to those diagnosed HIV positive. Treatments and preventative measures have begun to eliminate the stigma that surrounds AIDS and has allowed for thousands of people to live full lives no matter their diagnosis. In this video, I will explore the themes of Silver Lake Life as director Tom Jocelyn and his partner Mark Massey face their mortality head-on and grant strangers access into the final moments of their life after both being diagnosed with AIDS. I will discuss the performative nature of the film and Jocelyn's use of home videos, which are filmed with extremely personal and heartbreaking moments. These filmmakers create a world of perseverance and love as they visit an endless stream of doctors, have visits from family and friends who are there to say goodbye, and their attempt at remaining each other's support system, despite both battling a deadly disease they know will claim their, them in a matter of time. The film opens by showing the audience images of what we find out later to be Tom's ashes. There are images of medication and home videos that we would see titled Silver Lake Life. We begin to hear Mark talk about the final moments of Tom's life, that what they meant to him and the things he misses about Mark. This immediate setup prepares the viewer for the film, and we are about to see what tells the tale of someone facing their own mortality. And seeing these tapes that have been put together and edited into the final film by filmmaking partner and producer Peter Friedman, we are getting a glimpse into the process of what it was like to create the film as it's being watched. Bill Nichols discusses in Introduction to Documentary that important qualities of the performative mode of documentary filmmaking, stating, Performative documentary underscores the complexity of our knowledge of the world by emphasizing its subject and effective dimensions. He goes on to further state later in that same section about how film is represented, stating the referential quality of documentary that attests to its function as a window onto the world yields to an expressive quality that affirms the highly situated, embodied, and vividly personal perspective of specific subjects, including the filmmaker. Jocelyn brings the camera into some of his most personal moments in the last year of his life. By documenting his deteriorating health and allowing the camera into his doctor's visits and other hurdles with keeping his health care coverage, the viewer is now being shown the dark parts of his life that tell the story of his constant battle. Many times throughout the film, both Jocelyn and Massey also break the fourth wall, speaking directly to the camera. This technique is effective in drawing the audience further into the story, not as a mere spectator, but as a personal confidant to these men. And it calls attention to the filmmaking process once again, another quality found in performative filmmaking. Jocelyn creates a strong relationship between the audience and himself by being so candid about his experiences. In a scene where Tom is filming his trip to the grocery store, we see him struggling with his items. Later in that very same sequence, the camera is with Tom in his car as he discusses how tired he became in the store, even telling the viewer that he was unable to film anymore and why there was a break in the sequence in the first place due to the fact that the illness has weakened his body. 
This extremely personal construction of events continues until Tom's final moments as Massey eventually turns the camera on to record shortly after Tom's passing. In this scene, Mark focuses the camera on Tom's body in the moments where he is broken apart himself as he looks upon his partner who just lost his life. The scene continues as the coroner comes to remove his body. And this moment in the film is a culmination of extremely intimate and vulnerable moments presented by the filmmakers. Driving home the theme of facing one's own mortality as they fight a disease that is determined to take their final breaths. While in this moment in the film is extremely powerful and provides a realistic depiction of the true effects that this disease can have on the body, there is a sense of discomfort in these final moments. A discomfort brought into the audience as a viewer as we feel like an intruder into these moments, and perhaps we weren't meant to see them. It is hard to determine whether this scene is an ethical error, error on producer Peter Friedman, or if this was an intention set on early by Tom Jocelyn in the beginning of creating this film. Throughout the film, Jocelyn is aware of his deteriorating health and knows that AIDS will claim his life sooner rather than later. It could be argued that Jocelyn had always intended on sharing these after-death moments with his audience as he himself spent his final days preparing for his own passing, continuing to document his disease until his body would no longer allow him to do so. Mark begins to take the lead as a filmmaker in these moments, and we can recall a moment earlier in the film where an image of a script reveals Peter as a director in the event of Tom's untimely passing before he's able to complete the movie. Silver Lake Life takes the viewer on a journey that is filled with heartache and love. From the early moments of his diagnosis to the final moments of his life, Jocelyn allows audiences to experience a disease that many only know from an inaccurate representation in a narrative film or from what they hear on the news. As we are granted unique access by the filmmaker into the, his life, we not only get to see the effects of AIDS, but we get to see his life as an artist, a lover, and a friend.